Welcome to another episode of VMblog's Expert Interview Series, and today we're joined by John Egan, the CEO of Cantaba. John, welcome. Thanks for having me. So if we could, let's, I guess, start off by having you do a quick introduction and maybe provide a little background on why you started the company. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I'm a CEO and a co-founder here at Cantaba. Um, and the, the reason for starting this company goes back a little ways. Uh, but uh, before I jump into that, I'll talk a little bit about the product itself. So, so Kandaba is an incident management platform. Uh, we're designed to take the overhead and the busy work uh, out of the way during major incident management processes in companies of all sizes. So really when you boil it down, we're sort of this one click system for implementing all the best practices for incident management. And my background and, and my team's background actually is uh, we were all previously at Facebook, uh, engineers and product managers there. Um, we worked primarily on internal tools uh, and I also built the uh, uh, team that eventually created Workplace, which is Facebook's enterprise offering, uh, primarily out in Menlo Park and, and also in London. So we have a lot of experience building these kinds of tools. Um, and the, uh, the, the history here is when we left Facebook and we started to build our own company, uh, like every other organization, we immediately had piles of fires to put out for the organization we were starting to build. And we went to all of our friends who had left Facebook um, and we're now working at other unicorns and startups and you know, late stage mature organizations. And we said, look, we're doing incident management now at our own company. You know, what, what are you using? What, what, what tool is solving this for you? Expecting them with deep pockets and working for major organizations to come back and say, well, it's this, you need to use this product. And instead they all came back and said, you know, we're, we're sort of stitching things together. We're, we're kind of like running this as a manual process and we're stitching Slack together with Google Docs together with, you know, some pieces of pager duty for alerting and, and wiring that back over to uh, Jira for our follow on tasks. And, uh, and what we realized, you know, as tools builders was that's, that's the indicator you generally watch for, for there's an opportunity to build something that just fixes a lot of this for people to get the administrative work out of the way. And that was really the beginning of Kintaba is, is we wanted to build this for ourselves and for all of our friends and all the other companies that we knew out there that were implementing, you know, what we call modern incident management, major incident management, their organizations. And the, uh, the best way to build a, a process into your company is to build a tool. So we built this and, and now we've opened it up to the world. And then I guess specifically, obviously, you know, Facebook has their own way of approaching incident management and that you guys, you just talked about how, uh, you know, th this is all part of your background and, and your team's background. How does, how does the software tool that you've built help other companies sort of copy the Facebook approach? <laughs> so so I, I don't want to, we don't perfectly copy the Facebook approach so much as we take a lot of the thematic elements of how Facebook operates, Google operates, um, a lot of other sort of mature organizations that are practicing this, uh, especially sort of in the unicorn space. And, and what we really do is we try to pick up all of the individual process pieces and link them together in such a way that you don't have to think about it. So, so incident management, as you know, is, is all of these different phases, right? It's the declaration, uh, it's the awareness across your organization, it's the assembly of the team, it's the actual collaboration and response process, it's the uh, uh, evolution as the timeline moves forward of who needs to be added as more information is learned through the root cause analysis. Uh, it's ultimately a post-mortem and then it's that follow-up. And, uh, and the best practices that we really implement is making sure each of those steps happens automatically without uh, having to have a, a manager or, or a director or someone come in and sort of prod everyone every day. Say, have you finished that postmortem? You know, are you, have you updated the Excel sheet or the, uh, the Google sheet so everyone can see what the current status is? Um, you know, have you, have you maintained the timeline? Did you mark that milestone? All of those pieces uh, sort of roll together into this, this, this process that companies like Facebook practice really well. And the reason they practice it well is because they're able to practice it consistently. And that's really what, what, what Cantaba brings to your organization is it brings you that consistent ability to repeat best practices, not just to sort of read about them and then hope you're everyone inside of the company remembers them. And I'm sure, you know, I have this question, so I'm sure viewers who are watching may have the same question. Uh, but can you explain a little bit more of the difference between uh, incident management versus incident response? Yeah, definitely. So uh, incident management really is that top level 
you know, flow that your organization should be walking through every time it hits a major incident. Um, it's, it's sort of the stabilizing direction that's given to the team in terms of here's the steps we're going to follow as we get from the beginning to the end. And if we do that every time, then our company will become stronger because through that process, we make sure that we're learning, we make sure we're bringing the right people in, and we make sure that we're record keeping and tracking from a metric standpoint. And, um, and that's really where we think of incident management. Now, now if, you, if you read about management versus response online, you'll see a lot of sort of mixing of these terms. But generally, the response is more of the directed, we've, we've declared already, and now we're going and we're putting out this fire. Right? And now we're sort of taking those immediate actions. And inside of Kentaba, that's all contained inside of the Incident Command Center. But it's, a, it's, it's one step within the larger management process. And what we're seeing a lot of in, in industry these days is sort of a recognition that there's a higher level view, which is your management process that sits atop your incident response actions. Um, and so the vocabulary, I think, is really evolving. But that's, that's how we think about it. And, you know, part of these discussions uh, on the expert interview series is we always try to figure out, you know, uh, and ask folks <clears throat> if they could talk something, you know, about their differentiators. Uh, and, and just out of curiosity, I, I may be off the mark, but, uh, you know, how are you different from a tool I, like a pager duty, for instance? Yeah, definitely. So, so PagerDuty has been out there for, for you know, a decade now and, and, and certainly has a, has a large footprint. A number of our customers do use PagerDuty um, primarily for its original intended purpose, which is alert routing. So we, we think about PagerDuty as a system that notifies folks when monitored systems identify definable problems, right? So uh, server 17B has gone offline, ping, bill. Bill wakes up, resets server 17B, and texts back and closes it, and you're done. You have an alert. Um, major incidents really are one level above alerts. So if you were looking at your PagerDuty dashboard in a lot of cases, uh, or any alerting systems dashboard, I don't, I don't want to call out PagerDuty specifically here, um, and you're having a major incident, the whole thing lights up, right? Because if you imagine a major incident like a tornado just ran over your data center, right? And you have thousands of alerts set up inside of that data center, right? You don't know what to do. They've all lit up at once. And so what Kentaba does is it really takes the incident as the first class system or uh, citizen inside of the system. It's the number one top level thing you're tracking and it can evolve over time. And you don't even have to necessarily know which service uh, caused the problem coming into it. So we really think of ourselves as one level above uh, where um, something like a PagerDuty or, or an Ops Genie or related uh, can be plugged in. And there are situations where you almost even want to map them one to one. But in general, because of the nature of that sort of top 1% of major company critical uh, outages and how you want to process them, they, they require their own human process flow that's a little bit different from sort of the, uh, the fully automated, um, you know, ping person, get response, close out right into metric approach that we've sort of used as an industry really for the last 10 years or so. And I'd like to, if you don't mind, learn a bit more about how you measure the efficacy of team responses to major outages like we talked about. Uh, I know there's, you know, various metrics from SLOs, SLAs, and terms like, you know, mean time to resolution. We've got, you know, all these different uh, acronyms out there. Do you yeah. think these are, are good metrics for measuring a team's response to a major outage? I, I mean, certainly the, the SL stars and the uh, MTT stars, right, are the collection of metrics we like to throw up when we're trying to talk about these things. Um, I think major incidents, the, the community in general, and, and Kentava is absorbing this a little bit, are actually changing a little bit of how we think about measurement for this class of incident, where because of their nature, they tend to be somewhat black swan events. If you're practicing major incident management correctly, you're really not getting repetition. So it's hard to compare your response time on one incident to the response time of another because they can be so, so vastly different. Your response time on a data center going completely offline versus your response time on a uh, different company critical system like an accounting system going down are, are, are vastly different expectations. And I think it's more important when, when doing metrics driven work around major incident management that what you're kind of watching is that top level number of what we call SEV ones, right? Of these major, major top level critical, super critical outages. And if you've implemented incident management correctly, then what we'll often see is your SEV twos and your SEV threes, your slightly lower but still high priority incidents actually increase initially because the implementation of the process is encouraging people to record and go through it. 
But because that process is being followed, your institutional knowledge and your follow-on tasks are actually preventing more of the major SEV1 outages. So we'll often point to that chart where we'll say, look, your SEV2, SEV3s for a while are going up, but look at your SEV1s, those are decreasing. And that's really what you want to see at a top level when you're practicing incident management. And when we tell companies this, it's often a little bit freeing, right? You're not necessarily looking at this incident and saying, oh, I've got to keep this response you know, under five minutes because the nature of it is we can't predict in a lot of cases the time to uh, mitigate for the types of events that really uh, genuinely require a SEV1 incident to be filed. And, you know, this tool that, that you guys have obviously is great for SRE teams. Do you think effective incident management needs to involve more folks within the organization? Yeah, and, and I think that's one of the big things that's happening uh, with sort of the recognition of modern incident management as well. Uh, it's practiced at, at the major companies really successfully, like the Googles and the Facebooks of the world. And the, the important thing is when you have something that we can really call company critical happening within the organization, you're naturally going to need to involve others. And so Cantabo works really hard to make sure you can also set up things like on-call rotations for your non-technical roles. So customer success, legal, uh, sales teams, um, you know, or your C-suite specifically. And it's really important to make sure those folks are involved in the process because A, they're sometimes an important responder. If you have a system that, that handles PII, you know, that's been, been uh, infiltrated and you, you're responding from a technical standpoint, you also probably need legal in there to be advising in terms of, you know, how that's affecting your compliance requirements. Um, and then further than that, it's important for these other parts of the company to be aware of what's happening, even if they're not participating, because a lot of the overhead communications noise that happens during incidents comes from the rest of the company. If you have a major outage on your site, everyone cares, your sales team cares, your customer success people care, your marketing people care, and they all wanna go and reach out to the poor engineering manager who's desperately trying to manage his team to go and solve the problem. And what really should happen is they should have access to the incident management system. And they should be able to see, you know, this is a SEV1. It's been going on for 15 minutes. We've got 12 people in there and there's a flurry of activity. And it really encourages um, an awareness without requiring open, uh, a piece of communication. And that's, that's, that's the big value in opening up access to incident management beyond SRE and ops teams. And I think that's one of the reasons that we even see small companies practicing uh, incident management long before you might say they, they're practicing any other formal SRE practices, because as a, as a process-driven effort, it's very human. It's very much who are the people and how are they connected and let's get this thing solved more than it is, you know, kicking off individual Python scripts, for example. Now, I know you've also announced uh, a new product called Automations, I believe. Can you tell our listeners a little bit more about that and talk about why it's important? Yeah, so, so automations is really exciting. It's a new feature inside of Kintaba that lets Kintaba take actions for you as the incident evolves. And these are primarily process-based actions in terms of getting the right people involved in the incident. So an example could be, going back to my PII example, if you're responding to a major outage and there's a, or a major uh, system issue and there's been a, a PII system problem, you might need to get legal involved, but the responders might not know who that person is or even that legal is a requirement. So what the automation system does is it's a bit of an if this then that system where it'll say, okay, recognize that PII has been marked inside of this thing. It's a SEV2, like we need to go and get the legal department on call involved. And then it gets bumped up to a SEV1 maybe a little bit later when they realize it's a bigger issue than originally thought. And that automatically uh, CCs the um, CIO and pulls them into the system. So it's kind of a configurable set of rules that can operate during the incident response uh, that removes the need for the responders to necessarily know all of the rules within the organization of who should be involved at any given time. And it's, it's, it's super important. And the reason we built automations is because as you open up incident management to more and more people outside of that sort of core group, you know, maybe five or six people who really practice it every day from an SRE standpoint, you need to provide that um, organizational uh, traversal ability as much coded into the system as possible so that if someone's first time filing an incident, they don't also have to know the entire org hierarchy. They can say, okay, SEV1, system 17, that means person Y, and they get added automatically. 
So it's, it's, a, it's a pretty cool, powerful system that lives inside of the incident response piece of the larger incident management that is at Kintaba. Now, I know we, we covered a lot of information today. So as, as we sort of wrap things up, uh, where should viewers go if they want to learn more about the things that we talked about? Is there uh, obviously materials? Is there demos or uh, video demos or you know, a trial or anything like that, that that people can get their hands on? Yeah, definitely. It's Kintaba.com. It's uh, K-I-N-T-A-B-A.com. Um, and we're free for small teams. So up to five users, the product is free. Um, no monthly fee. It's not a limited trial. Uh, when you get beyond that, it's pretty reasonable pricing. It's all published on our site. It's all public and, and open. You don't even have to come and get a demo from us. You can sign up right on the site, uh, get your whole team on board. Uh, we have videos of, of each piece of the product. Um, and of course, there's, there's a little chat button in the corner if you want to talk to our team directly. Uh, so it's very easy, very accessible. We're trying very hard to knock the walls down. We don't want to feel like an enterprise product if you want to come and get this thing installed yourself, if you're capable. You know, we really believe strongly in one-click incident management up and running at your company. That's great. Well, you know, thanks again for, you know, educating us and, and joining us today on the uh, VM Blog interview series, John. And, uh, you know, I really appreciate you taking the time out and uh, talking with us. Great. Thank you, David. Had a great time. All right.